The hero's journey is a narrative pattern that appears in drama, storytelling, religious rituals, psychological development. It's when a character goes on a journey, wins a victory, and comes back transformed. You've seen this many times in films such as Star Wars, Shrek, Jaws, Lord of the Rings, The Matrix, The Wizard of Oz, Beverly Hills Cop, Avatar. We're gonna look at the hero's journey in Team America World Police. There's a reason why I want to use Team America, not just because I love this movie, but because Matt Stone and Trey Parker, the guys behind South Park who made Team America, they originally wanted to do The Day After Tomorrow and Armageddon just with puppets. They thought that would be hilarious and they couldn't secure the rights to those screenplays. So they ended up having to write their own movie to do and they wanted to poke fun at Hollywood movies. So they're so obviously doing the hero's journey that it's funny because they're just satirizing films, but it makes it easy to analyze the script because they kind of call attention to when they're using the hero's journey. I'm also going to use the terminology in this book, The Writer's Journey by Chris Vogler. This is a great book. I'll put a link for it down below. Joseph Campbell really made this popular with his book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. He really just analyzed a lot of myths, a lot of religious stories, and he just found certain patterns that were in all of these, and it's something that we tend to automatically identify when it comes to storytelling. And then Chris Vogler made more of a writer-friendly version. So what are the steps to the hero's journey? There's the ordinary world, call to adventure, refusal of the call, meeting with the mentor, crossing the first threshold, test allies' enemies, approach to innermost cave, ordeal, reward, seizing the sword, the road back, resurrection, and return with elixir. And this is how Chris Vogler compares the hero's journey to a basic three-act structure. So now let's look at Team America. The first step of the hero's journey is the ordinary world, where we kind of see the status quo before the adventure begins. So it starts in Paris, where the terrorists are up to no good, and Team America fights the terrorists and wins, but they also end up destroying most of Paris in the process. This is the world that our protagonist is going to enter. So then we meet our protagonist. We go to New York City. And we meet Gary, who is an actor on Broadway. Now here's what's really funny. So since Trey and Matt are making fun of the hero's journey, they kind of pick the weirdest skill possible. So they make his special skill be acting. He's an actor, which is hilarious. How do you make yourself so somber and emotional to make everybody cry like that? It's not that hard, really. I just think about the saddest moment in my life. And they also here give a glimpse of his ghost, kind of what his greatest fear is, but we just get a little taste. We don't find out exactly what it is. We just get a hint that he's got something that haunts him. <laughs> And take a note here, my screenwriters, a lot of screenwriters I find they want to set up everything in the beginning so they just kind of spell everything out so you know everything. Whereas sometimes it's better just layer a little bit of mystery. So here we just get enough to know he's got some kind of issue or problem but we don't get it spelled out. The next step of the hero's journey is the call to adventure. This could be a letter, this could be a phone call, this could be a messenger. Somehow the character is presented with a problem, challenge, challenge or adventure. I have an incredible offer for you, Gary. And he outlines exactly what he wants Gary to do. Our only hope is to have somebody act like a terrorist who wants to help them carry out the attack. The next step in the journey is refusal of the call. And this is important because it shows that your journey is very scary to the lead character. It's very different than what they're used to. It is going to address their greatest fear. And it has to be something significant and dangerous. And it can't just be something that they just instantly do. Otherwise, they don't really need to change if that's so easy for them. So they have to be hesitant. So refusal of the call. What's funny about Team America is they do this so on the nose. If you're not interested, there's the door. All right, thanks. He just walks out the door. Then he has some time to reflect on the decision, look at a lot of monuments, decide that freedom isn't free, and he goes back. I 
had to come back. The next step is the meeting with the mentor. Now, he already met the mentor because the mentor was the one that brought the call to adventure. That isn't always the case. That's just how it happens to be in this situation. So now it's time for the initiate to be trained. They could be given some kind of special potion, a special relic. They could be given some tough love to toughen them up. They could be given some instruction. Here, Gary is given a disguise so that he will fit in with the terrorists. It's uncanny. You're going to fool everyone, Gary. But Spodswood does give Gary one special tool. If for some reason your cover is blown and the terrorists take you prisoner, well, you'll probably want to take your own life. Here, you better have this. Then we come to crossing the threshold. This is where the character first kind of dips their toes into the special world. In the hero's journey, they talk about the ordinary world and then the special world. This is kind of the point of no return where they first start on their adventure. Gary travels to Cairo, Egypt to get information about where the terrorists have the WMDs, the weapons of mass destruction. And he's a little scared on the way because he realizes this is it. There's no turning back. On stage, if I mess up a line, it could mean a bad review. If I mess up here, we're all dead. The next step is test allies and enemies. This is where he first encounters the enemy and has to pass a few tests. His first test is trying to get past the door guards. Muhammad Jihad, Allah, Durk, Durk, Muhammad Jihad, Muhammad. Fuck, Dirk, Dirk, Allah. Haka Sherpa Sherpa, Abakala. Oh, Durka Durka Durka. All right, Gary! A lot of times in this part of the hero's journey, the hero needs to get information. And the book actually talks about a lot of the time this is a bar scene. And in Star Wars, it's a bar scene. And in Team America, they definitely do a little homage here to the bar scene in Star Wars. <laughs> Then we start dipping into Approach to Innermost Cave, where Gary is taken deep into the terrorist headquarters, and he faces another test where he has to use his acting. I put a jihad on them. And if you don't believe it, then you better kill me now, because I'll put a jihad on you too. I like you. Then this starts dipping into the ordeal, the terrorists see that Team America is watching them and they go on the run. They take Gary with them, but then he finds out that they are actually packed with bombs and it's a suicide mission, so his life is on the line. In the ordeal section, the character faces a life and death situation. Gary almost doesn't make it, but Team America saves him. The next section is reward. Great job, team. Head back to base for debriefing and cocktails. But because this ordeal was life and death, it rattles the protagonist a little bit. So this is where Gary actually confides in Lisa what it is that scares him. We were all out of the zoo one day. I was doing some acting, walking on the railing of the gorilla exhibit. I fell in. Everyone screamed and Tommy jumped in after me, forgetting that he had blueberries in his front pocket. Everyone panicked and cried out for somebody to help, but it was too late. The gorillas beat him to death. So he is actually afraid that his acting will cause people harm, that people will die because of his acting. Now this is a very silly ghost and a very silly fear, but again, Matt and Trey are poking fun at traditional Hollywood movies and they picked a very silly ghost, but that's Gary's ghost. He's afraid his acting will cause people to die. In the book, it also mentions that because the protagonist has gone through this ordeal, they might actually become more attractive. So this is also where Gary gets together with Lisa. The story now starts dipping into the next phase of the hero's journey, which is the road back. It's when the hero leaves the special world and comes back to the ordinary world. This is also where the hero might encounter a consequence of their actions during the ordeal. Next what happens is the terrorists actually blow up Panama Canal. Terrorists claim that the attack was a retaliation for Team America's actions in Cairo. Alec Baldwin is rallying all the members of the Film Actors Guild. Alec Baldwin? Gary? He's, he's my hero. Who was to blame for these attacks in Panama? The terrorists? The person who supplied them with WMDs? 
No. Blame Team America. This is just too much for Gary to take. His greatest fear was that his acting would cause people to die, and now he's being directly blamed for thousands of people dying because of his acting. And especially having his idol, Alec Baldwin, scold him for doing this. It's too much. He can't take it. He leaves. Then Team America faces even more repercussions because of their actions in Cairo, and the terrorists go directly after Team America. Bang, pick up. Shoot them down. They capture the entire team, and they blow up headquarters. Gary has some time to reflect on his situation, he drinks a lot of alcohol, and he decides to go back. He finds Spodswood, and Spodwood trains him to go back into battle with a montage. We're gonna need a montage. Then we start ramping up towards the resurrection. This is where the character kind of faces their final exam. They face another life and death situation that is a lot like the ordeal. Gary goes to the World Peace Conference. All the Hollywood stars are also going to be there along with his idol, Alec Baldwin, who is actually working with the terrorists. And because this movie is satire, they include the whole cliche, villain explains their plan. The terrorists know to be in position by the time Alec Baldwin takes the stage. That's when I trigger all the WMDs to go off at the same time. And again, a lot of times this resurrection beat kind of mirrors the ordeal beat. So here we have Gary once again having to get past door guards, but this time he does it with much more confidence and ease. You show credentials! Hey, you don't need to see my credentials. I left them at home and I'm running late. I believe him. Yeah, me too. A ping chong. Okay, have a nice day. Hong Kong. My God, his acting is better than ever. He displays all kinds of skills he has learned through this adventure. He frees most of the team, and then they all get together to go save Lisa and stop the bombs. But just when they're about to get to Kim Jong-il, Alec Baldwin rallies the crowd and keeps Team America from saving the day. This is where Gary now has to outact Alec Baldwin to get the crowd on their side so they can go prevent the world from being destroyed. Gary, you've got to take the stage. No, I can't upstage Alec Baldwin. He's the best actor in the world. You have to try. And in an amazing demonstration of acting that has a whole lot of bad words that I can't put here, Gary completely wins over the crowd, stumps Alec Baldwin, and they are able to press the stop button on the ticking clock. The final portion of the hero's journey is the return with Elixir. The hero returns to the ordinary world with some special skill, some type of potion, some type of power, or it could be something like they have love, or freedom, or knowledge. So in this case, Gary has the love of Lisa, he has confidence in his acting, and he's now got a new purpose in life. He's part of Team America, and is going to continue to battle terrorists. Now here's something to keep in mind with the hero's journey. It's not supposed to just be paint by numbers, fill in the blanks, because you might make a really boring story. And this is what the book has to say. It says, the hero's journey is a skeletal framework that should be fleshed out with details and surprises of the individual story. The structure should not call attention to itself. That's funny that they totally called attention to it in Team America, because they're making fun of it. Uh, nor should it be followed too precisely. The order of the stages given here is only one of many possible variants. So you could rearrange things, you could change things in Team America. The call to adventure came from the mentor. In other stories, it might not be like that. Like in Star Wars, the call to adventure was the hologram that Luke Skywalker found on R2-D2 of Princess Leia. So you can kind of mix things up a little bit, make it different. It says the stages can be deleted, added to, and drastically shuffled without losing any of their power. This can be useful to just to help you brainstorm ideas to make your story a little more rich. You might notice you're missing some beats here and there. I find a lot of scripts for some reason, I don't know why this happens, they just tend to be this big long setup and then a climax, and then it ends, and that's kind of it. Whereas the hero's journey gives you a little bit more of a roller coaster, so you might be missing a few little dips in the roller coaster. So it's something to play with, the hero's journey, and I recommend 
the book, The Writer's Journey, that gives more information about each of the steps and some of your options to give you some ideas. There you go. I hope this video helped you. If it did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will talk to you later.